the uh, opportunity to speak to you again. <clears throat> what I wanted to do, <clears throat> of course, I'm doing this from my bedroom. The light's not very good here, but <clears throat> I'm assuming you can see me quite well. I just can't see anything else very well. This is a lesson I've done before, and I thought I'd just uh, do it again because over time, you know, people kind of forget. I want to talk about uh, um, the sin of Achan. Yeah, it's taken from uh, Joshua 6 chapter. Let me try to get a little closer so I can see. Uh, it says in Josh, Joshua 6 chapter, verses 17 through 19, and now in the city, now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, <clears throat> because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the uh, Lord. We see here that um, there were certain things designated as the accursed things, and they were not to touch them. But there were other things that were of value that were going to be brought into the treasury. But the people weren't to keep it themselves. They were to bring it all into the, the treasury. So in Joshua 7, chapter verse 1, we read there, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. Now, what was about these uh, accursed things? The only thing I can think of about these accursed things, the Lord said, you know, leave them alone. Don't touch them. And we also see that it was the children of Israel that committed a trespass. So by extension, Achan's committing a trespass. Uh, also uh, involved the children of Israel by extension. So in Joshua, the seventh chapter, verse 16 through 21. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. So they're, they're going to discover who was the one that actually did it. And the tribe of Israel, uh, Judah was taken. He brought uh, the clan of Judah and the, he took the family of uh, the Zarhites and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man and Zabdi uh, was taken and then he brought the household, his household man by man and Achan the son of Carmi the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you have done. Do not uh, hide it from me. And Achan answered, uh, Joshua and said, I, indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done when I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. He did pretty good accounting of what he had taken. I covered them and took them. In the air, they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver underneath it. And Joshua said uh, in verse 25 and 26, why have you troubled us? So we know that Achan's sin troubled the rest of them. The rest of them uh, did suffer because of it. So innocent people can suffer because of sinful people. The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after 
they had stoned him with stones. <clears throat> then they raised over him a great heap of stones and still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor to this day. <clears throat> Ever since the uh, fall of Satan, uh, he's been the arch enemy of God and all that is good. So anytime God has authorized a good work, the devil was there to oppose it. And this prime reason given in the scriptures uh, for the Lord's people to keep as far away from the evil one as possible. Satan is the enemy of all truth and will capitalize on every opportunity uh, to lure every, lure any and every of the Lord's people away from truth and righteousness. He is not only the enemy, enemy of God, but of every child of God. And he'll do anything within his power to keep people from uh, yielding themselves to God. So the devil began his <clears throat> nefarious work so far, so far as humans are concerned when the serpent uh, beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> From the inspired uh, record, it seems that Satan has always began his instigation near the beginning of anything that God authorized his people to do. <clears throat> Consequently, we have an impressive record of first sins in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And he's still working. We are all aware of the first sin that was committed by Eve when she ate of the forbidden fruit. First recorded sin after worship at the altar was instituted was Cain uh, Cain's offering of that which was not authorized in the burnt offering. The first recorded sin after the law was delivered to the children of Israel, uh, that is, when it, after it's taught to them, was the one by Nadab and Abihu. First uh, recorded sin that was committed by the children of Israel after they crossed over to the land of Canaan is the sin of Achan. The first recorded sin committed by members of the New Testament uh, church was the one committed by Ananias and Sapphira. Each of the examples uh, just cited demonstrate that in every instance, beginning with the sacrifice first authorized that Cain violated, the sin in question had to do with some, in some respect, with an offering or something that should have been dedicated to the Lord as he directed and authorized. What was true in the cases mentioned here remain true today in principle, which principles are taught and warnings given throughout the New Testament. <clears throat> When Jesus was here among men, he said, take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Luke 12, 15, the apostle Paul exhorts, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication and cleanliness, passion, uh, of God is for God is coming to the sons of disobedience, Colossians 3 uh, 5 through 6. So in Numbers 32, uh, 32nd uh, chapter of Numbers, verse 23, we read, But if you do not do so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. The words just quoted uh, were spoken to the 
two and one half tribes of the children of Israel, Israel who asked for and received permission to settle in the land of Gilead on the east side of the Jordan River. Their request was granted with the stipulation that they would cross over the Jordan and help with the con uh, conquest and then they could return their families and their own possessions. And so Moses said to them, but if you do not do so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord and be sure your sin will find you out. Although these words were spoken on a particular occasion with a, a limited meaning, it remains true that such words express a, in general, a general truth that is always applicable to the lives of the Lord, Lord's people in any age, namely, our sins will not be done with us when we are done with them. It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. This is a very serious matter and it should challenge the attention of everyone whose attention is called to it. In considering the detection of sin, we should remember that every sin brings its punishment. Sin will always be punished. This is a principle of the divine economy and is inflexible. As we read in Hebrews, the second chapter, verses one through three, therefore, we give, must give the most more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the, by the Lord and was confirmed by us by those who heard him. <clears throat> the warning by Moses does not say when their sins would find them out, but it does say that their sins would find them out. It may be sooner or later, uh, but detection is certain. This does not mean that every sin committed by man will be found out by other men but the sinner will be found out. <clears throat> well, uh, what was Achan like before he took the forbidden things? Was there any behavior that indicated his covetousness? If he seemed to others not to covet material things, then he was at least a hypocrite. A hypocrite may conduct himself in such a way as to hide his hypocrisy completely. But as certain as the Bible is truth, he will be uh, dogged by his sin. A man may go on for years, perhaps, and no one may discover uh, his failings. Uh, he may not know them himself. And we have a way of deceiving ourselves. He may not discover his failings until at length he is brought into certain circumstances that bring him out. Often is the case that men uh, turn out so differently from expectations. We are scarcely able to tell beforehand another's outcome because we just don't know. Would we ever dare to anticipate beforehand our own outcome? I think we see very clearly the effect that power <clears throat> and power and riches have on a person. The various changes of life challenge a person as well as for good as for bad. We may find that we do not know a person as well as we thought. 
even though we have known that person uh, for years, most of the time we are disappointed and sometimes startled as if such a one is a different person from the one we thought we knew. Perhaps it is best, it, perhaps it is but the uh, uh, coming to light of sins committed long before we knew the, those people. So let's look at the uh, text again. At Joshua, the sixth chapter, verses 17 through 19. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction it and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, because she had the messengers that we sent. And you by all means abstain from the sacred things and from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take out of the uh, accursed things and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord and shall be brought uh, into the uh, house, the treasury of the Lord. <clears throat> the ASP uh, renders the 17th verse to say, the city shall be devoted the idea is that the object is devoted to destruction. So the New King James Version says, shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. And the King James Version shall be, uh, says shall be accursed. The idea is the same. The city is scheduled to be destroyed. This idea is uh, confirmed by verse 21. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and, and uh, woman, young and old, uh, ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. The Hebrew word translated doomed, accursed, or devoted can be used in a good sense as well. In Leviticus, the 27th chapter, verses 16 through 21, and also 28. He says that uh, when anything was devoted to God in a good sense, the meaning is that it was, uh, was or is consecrated to him for a worthy purpose. Anything, therefore, can be devoted to God for a sacred use or for destruction. Following the destruction of Jericho, Joshua, speaking for the Lord, pronounce a curse on the man who should rebuild the city. In Joshua, the sixth chapter, verse 26, we read, then Joshua charged them at that time saying, cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city, Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest, he shall set up his gates. And it appears uh, from the curse uh, upon Jericho that it was the will of God that the city uh, remain in perpetual destruction as a memorial to his abhorrence to the idolatry of the city and its attendant vices. Nevertheless, it also seems that he left man to exercise his, his, the freedom of his own will regarding the matter, but not before a grim warning regarding the consequences of ignoring his will. The city was rebuilt some 550 years later. And the following statement shows that God does not forget. It was in the day of Ahab that he of Bethel built Jericho. He laid his foundation with a biome, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Tigab, he set up his gates according to the word of the Lord. 
which he had spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. That's from 1 Kings 16th chapter, verse 34. <clears throat> the only people of Jericho allowed to live were Rahab the harlot and those of her family because of the kindness that she showed to the two spies whom Joshua had sent to view the land, especially Jericho. Josephus, uh, in his Antiquities of the Jews, uh, referred to her as a innkeeper. But the Hebrew is clear that she was a harlot. And if she is the woman uh, referred to in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, she was the mother of Boaz, who was the husband of Ruth, who, who is listed in the genealogy of Jesus. The children of Israel were solemnly warned regarding the accursed things of Jericho. It is interesting to note the play on the words doomed, devoted in King James Version, and accursed. Both words are from the same Hebrew word. We learn from other scriptures that the people of Israel were sometimes allowed to take for themselves the spoil of the cities they captured or destroyed. But Jericho was an exception. Of course, we know about Roman history that that's the primary pay of the soldiers. They got to keep all the uh, booty of that, the spoil of the, of the places they destroyed. Well, Joshua warned the people that if they violated the Lord's command respecting Jericho, they would make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Under these solemn circumstances, God told the people through Joshua the exact items that were to be brought into the treasury of the Lord. They were to keep none of it. <clears throat> Sin has a uh, far-reaching consequence in, uh, in Joshua, the first chapter, of, the first verse of chapter 7, but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding their cursed things. But it was Achan that committed the sin. For Achan, the son of uh, Carmi, the son of Zabdi, and the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. You cannot predict the extent of the consequences of sin. It appears that only Achan and perhaps his family knew of the sin that he had committed. Yet the whole nation was held responsible for his deed. The prince, this principle is emphasized and illustrated repeatedly throughout the Bible. Everyone who is familiar with the scriptures is, is aware of Cain's question, am I my brother's keeper? And God's reply to him found in the fourth chapter of Genesis. Paul tells us that, quote, unquote, none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself, Romans 14, chapter verse 7. <clears throat> Jesus makes it clear in the letters to the seven churches in Asia, that's uh, in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, that responsibility for the welfare of others cannot be ignored. What can we say about our own influence over others, whether good or bad? Of course, Cain had a bad influence over Abel, but his influence didn't stop there. It followed him uh, to his banishment, such that he was fearful that he would be killed. What about our own influence? Have we spoken something thoughtlessly or foolishly? What about the angry or irritable word? Or some more grievous impediments that 
these placed in the, the path of others. Who is there that has not said or done something, the effect of which may have caused another to stumble or to lead them into temptation? We have marvelous opportunities to help others resist temptation and to stand uh, firm in the faith that saves. The question then, am I my brother's keeper? Is a haunting question. Sin works both ways. The innocent are responsible for influencing others for good. And the offender is responsible for bringing sin or the harmful effects of sin into the lives of others. If people really uh, considered the question posed by Cain, they would have a deeper concern for the well-being of others. One could no longer look at the sinner with a indifference pity, but would seek that the offense is properly atoned for. Alas, often pity is all that can be offered. It might be added that another great principle to bear in mind is that of uh, cross-bearing, namely making a sacrifice for Christ's sake for the good of someone else. Christ bore the cross for us and he instructs us to deny ourselves and take up our uh, cross daily and follow him. That's in Luke uh, 9, chapter verse 23. Well, as we read, uh, uh, Achan's sin was discovered and punished. After the destruction of Jericho, the people appeared to be greatly encouraged and we're ready to go on with the conquest as directed by Joshua. As was the next city to be, Ai was the next city to be taken. It was only a short distance from Jericho. Since it was an insignificant place, the men of Israel felt that a relatively small uh, army or force would suffice to its capture. This estimate was based on the report of the spies who were sent to check on the conditions there. It was decided that two or 3,000 men were fully capable uh, to do the job. 3,000 men were sent and 3,000 uh, men fled for the men of Ai, save for the 36 or so men lost in the defeat. This brought uh, consternation into the camp of, of Israel and the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Joshua and the elders fell upon their faces uh, before the ark of Jehovah until the evening. They all covered their beards with dust in their great humiliation. It was in this state of dismay that Joshua prayed these words. Alas, Lord God, who may, who have you brought his people over to the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? All that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before the, its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and all of our uh, name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? Well, God responded uh, to it by revealing that Israel had, had sinned and therefore could no longer stand before their enemies. Furthermore, he told Joshua that he would no longer be with them unless the wrong was properly dealt with. There are many congregations among the Lord's uh, church that are similarly affected. 
they seem wholly unable to resist the onslaught of the evil one, all because they have allowed sin in the camp and have done nothing about it. If only they were like Joshua and the elders and held their heads down in great distress, if they'd done that, then they, something could be done. God told Joshua what he had to do, and he did it. We have the teaching of the New Testament to guide us in <clears throat> dealing with such situations. Again, look at Revelation 2 and uh, 3, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 2, Thessalonians uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 6 through 15. When it was discovered that Jericho was the offender, Achan was the offender, Joshua called upon him to give glory to God and confess unto him his sin. Here's a lesson which uh, should not be overlooked. We can give glory to God by confessing our sins for the simple reason that when he says that we have sinned and we confess it. We are admitting that he is right about it. The term confess literally means to say the same thing. No man can hide his sin from God. He will forgive us. He will forgive sin as we confess it. As the Apostle John wrote, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us, to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's when we refuse to confess, that is, admit or acknowledge that we have sinned. We do not uh, glorify God, but make him a liar. For he said that we did sin. When Achan confessed his sin, he not only told what he uh, had done, but it also showed the development of sin and the way it uh, is committed. He saw, he coveted, he took. His was a deliberate and flagrant violation of God's specific command, and it was punishable only by death. Achan's family evidently shared his sin with him. It is far better to take steps to avert the fierce anger of God uh, here than in the hereafter. So I appreciate your attention to that. Apologize for my voice. Very difficult to talk, but anyway, that's the end of the lesson. <laughs>